Today I am testing not one, but two CPUs, and they are very similar, a i5-2400S and a i5-2400. The difference is that the S model has a lower base clock and a lower boost clock. On the i5-2400S it has a base clock of 2.5 GHz, where the 2400 non-S has a base clock of 3.1 GHz. The i5-2400S boosts up to 3.3 GHz, where the i5-2400S boosts up to 3.3 4 gigahertz, and they both have 4 cores and 4 threads. And I also want to see if these quite old CPUs can still play some games, and possibly some modern ones, in 2022. Well, okay, in a few days, 2023. So, for the test PC, you can see all of the specs here in CPU-Z and GPU-Z. The motherboard is the Asus PAZ77V Pro. I have a 128GB SSD from Inland as the boot drive. The game drive is a 2TB SSD from Samsung. It is a 870EVO. And I have 16GB of DDR3 1600MB. Hertz RAM from a brand called ATEC. I am recording with a capture card so there is no hit in performance and also all the games tested are at 1440p but it's not going to bottleneck the CPU because I'm using a RTX 3060 and that will max out both of these CPUs at 1440p with no issue. So Beam and G Drive at 1440p on the lowest preset on the i5-2400S got an average frame rate of 82, and the 1% lows were around 59, so a pretty playable experience. Not great, especially because it's low settings, but it's not bad. Perfectly playable. I could play this game with 30 FPS, and most people probably could. But then, if we look over on the i5-2400, on the same settings, same resolution, we were getting 100 frames per second on average, with a 77 frame per second 1% low. So, still lower than I was expecting on the lowest settings, but still a very, very playable experience, and you can't really complain about it. Then I tried my custom high settings, which is the ultra preset without dynamic reflections and the mesh on low, as well as grass almost all the way down to the minimum which doesn't really affect the look of the game all that much, but helps out quite a bit with the CPU and GPU's performance. And on these settings, the i5-2400S got 53 frames per second on average, with 38 frames per second 1% lows. And the i5-2400 got 73 frames per second on average, with 55 frames per second 1% lows. Fortnite on performance mode on the i5-2400S got an average frame rate of 110. That was nice, but the 1% lows really got you, so the 1% lows were 20. Now, that's still not that bad until you realize the game was an absolute stuttery mess. And I think that might be caused by performance mode. I've seen some videos from Zworms Gaming where he tested Fortnite and apparently performance mode stutters. I don't have access to the computer anymore to test it out on other settings besides performance mode, but that's just an FYI. And then on the 2400 non-S, it got an average frame rate of 165, with an average low of 19. So, the average low is lower on the i5-2400 non-S, though the average frame rate is way higher. The 1% low is basically margin of error, to be fair, it's only 1 FPS. One way or another, it's a pretty bad experience either way, but at least locking the frame rate helps a little bit. Keyword, a little bit. Still not great by any means, but it does help. GTA 5 on the normal settings on the i5-2400 got an average frame rate of 75 and a 1% low of 46 frames per second, which is pretty good. And on the i5-2400 non-S, it got 89 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 57. So about a 10 to 15 FPS increase in performance going from the i5-2400 to the i5-2400S. Not bad.
On Cyberpunk at 1440p low settings, the i5-2400S got an average frame rate of 26 and a 1% low of 14. And the game, I don't know if it's playable or not to be fair, I don't know how intensive the game gets, but at least driving around the city, it is doable I guess. It's not a great experience by any means, you can definitely feel the slowdowns, but at the same time, it's not completely unplayable. And on the i5-2400 non-S, it got 30 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 18. So marginally better, not great by any means still, but at least the average is 30 frames per second. But there's also another granted. The other granted is it was getting dips into the teens in some spots, which is not very good especially if you want smooth gameplay. In CSGO at the low settings, the i5-2400S got an average frame rate of 150 frames per second, with a 1% low of 65 frames per second. So, a completely buttery smooth experience, I cannot complain in the absolute slightest. The 1% lows aren't even below 60 frames per second. Now, for some, that's not going to be competitive, but I'd say, for the far majority of people, that is a perfectly playable experience. Experience, even for the people who have sweaty hands and play Fortnite, I mean CSGO. And on the i5-2400 non-S, it got... And on the i5-2400 non-S, it got 190 frames per second on average, with 1% lows of 90 frames per second. So, the 1% lows are well above 60. You didn't quite get 200 frames per second on average, but still though, that is a buttery smooth experience, and I cannot complain in the absolute slightest. Besides, I suck at the game. I still can't believe, the only game I won on CSGO is when I was playing on the Celeron G470, getting 15 frames per second. And all the other times when I'm getting over 100, I somehow lose. That's, that's fine, I'm getting off track. On the i5-2400S, in the CPU-Z benchmark, it got 288.9 points on the single-core test and 1032.4 points on the multi-core test. And on the i5-2400 non-S, it got 325.0 points on the single-core test and 1275.0 on the multi-core test. And on Cinebench R23, the i5-2400S got a score of 2,292 points for the multi-core test and 706 points for the single-core test. And the 2400 non-S got a score of 2,443 for the multi-core test and a score of 643 for the single-core test. Now, one interesting thing I found is on the i5-2400S, the single core score is significantly more than the single core score on the i5-2400. I don't know why, because it has the same amount of cores and the same amount of threads, and the clock speed is slower on the turbo and on the base clock. Now here is a fun one, how much power does the i5-2400S pull from the wall, and how much does the i5-2400 non-S pull from the wall? The reason why I'm doing this test is because the i5-2400 is supposed to use less power than the i5-2400 non-S. So this test is not scientific by any means, I have a power meter that measures how much power is being sucked from the wall. Though, the thing is, the total wattage, I am going to say, is not going to be accurate. The reason why is I have two monitors, two webcams, two microphones, two keyboards, two mice, basically two different computers plugged into the same outlet that I'm pulling this reading from. But the load on the other computer is the same, full load for the laptop, which is the recording computer. And all the components that are plugged in are the same. So on the i5-2400, the idle wattage being pulled from the wall is 126, and the full load wattage is 158, meaning the CPU uses 34 watts under full load. 
roughly. And on the i5-2400 non-S, it uses 126 watts idle and 190 watts under full load. And it uses 64 watts total, roughly. I mean, give or take a few watts, of course. Also, both of these tests were done on Cinebench R23, running the multi-core test. So here comes the hardest thing to answer. Do I recommend you to go out and buy a i5-2400 or an i5-2400S or both? Well, the answer is it depends. So if you have to have second generation Intel, I would recommend going for an i7, not an i5. If you have the budget, of course, because having four cores and eight threads is quite a bit better for a lot of modern games than having four cores and four threads. But if you have to have the i5, it works pretty good. Now, if you need a power efficient CPU, the i5-2400S does beat the i3-2120 I tested in a previous video. But if you're buying it and you don't care about the power usage, don't get the i5-2400S. There's not really a reason to. It gets about 20% less performance, but it also costs literally twice as much to run because it uses twice as much power. And here, where the electricity is 50 cents per kilowatt hour, that is a quite big difference, especially if you're going to be putting your computer under load quite often. And yes, I said my electricity is 50, 50 cents per kilowatt hour. That is insanely high. That's also partly why my main CPU is a Pentium G7400, by the way. It has extremely low power usage. That's also why I usually underclock my RTX 3060, so it uses less power. But I'm getting off track. I gotta say, these CPUs did put up a nice fight, but I can't really recommend either one of them in 2022, to be fair. It'd be better getting an i7-3770 or even a 4770, or if you can push the budget, maybe an 8770 or something along that line, which has more cores and more threads, or maybe even a cheap used AM4 motherboard with like a Ryzen 3100, for example, or a Ryzen 1700. Those would be a much better option. But one way or another, thank you so much for watching. If you want, you can leave a like, and have a great day.